me redneck, white trash, and blue collar. But I could change all that if I had a couple million dollars. What is up, everybody? It's your boy Matt again. Um, just left my uh, grandmother's house. Uh, we were watching this show called Dual Survival. Um, you know, it's about a uh, a uh, guy who lives out in the wilderness, and or a guy who uh, practically lives in the wilderness, and a uh, special forces uh, veteran. Uh, going out to like different places of the world to try to survive in the wild as if they were stranded there and You know some of these things that I'm watching are just Really baffling. I'm like I've never seen them before, you know or seen stuff done like that and I mean I'm a hunter, but this stuff, this stuff's like way, way over the top of my head, you know? It's like, phew, right? And I'm looking at these guys and what they're doing and, you know, this guy, he, they came upon this house, right? And or they, they were going through the woods and they came upon this house, but it, they were going to sleep in it, or this like little shack. They were going to sleep in it, but it was, like, infested with rats. So there really wasn't much they could do about it, except for the Special Forces guy came up with a, uh, an idea where you get, like, ox, ox crap or something, like, and, um, some coconut husks or, like, some kindling, and then wrapped it around and basically just smoked out all the rats, and they funneled, they put, like, windows or the... They put like a thing on the door to, or um, sorry, a yoga mat on the door, which I don't know why they had a yoga mat. That's beyond me. And they had this chicken wire, this, um, yeah, this like chicken wire, and they funneled so they could funnel the rats through to eat them, right? Because if they were to sleep in that, um, there's this thing called a hectavirus or something like that. It's an incurable. You get it from like places that are infested with rats and stuff and I'm looking at them like now this is genius they caught I don't remember how many rats they caught but they, they caught quite a bit I believe and um, they came upon this when, when the first show first started they came upon this uh, carcass of a boar in the, in the top in the top of a tree from a leopard and me being a hunter knowing that by just by a quick look at that carcass from before they even climbed up in there that the meat was no good the meat was absolutely no good <clears throat> and they brought the meat down they threw the meat down on the ground and they finally looked at it and they're like yep this meat's no good and I'm like I could have told you that before the get go that that meat wasn't salvageable but you know it's I'm not there I'm not with them and you know just some of the things that they're making with the with like tree branches and stuff it's it's really mind-boggling what the kind of stuff they can do and um what was i gonna say oh yeah yeah they um like they had one where a guy made a blow dart or a blow gun out of like a bamboo uh, tree and they like cut it in half and i'm thinking to myself why are you cutting it in half He's cutting it in half so he can, um, so he can, uh, hollow or uh, smooth out the inside to set the dart through and everything from, like, a cotton wad they found out of a first aid kit and all this other good stuff. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you know, just having the simplest little things in life just can get you a long way. It really can. And... Um, at the the first episode, the first episode we, my grandmother and I watched, they um, the special forces guy, or a lot of the military guys, when um, you're basically taught that your knife is your best friend, right? And in this episode, they um, they wouldn't, uh, they didn't let the special forces guy bring his knife, which to me, I'm like, 
you're basically getting, getting rid of his only tool, right? But me, I always carry a multi-tool on me and a knife. So, I mean, not saying that I, I will need them, but just in case if I do need them, I've got them, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that they didn't let him have his knife and they were going through and they found this um, this rock that was, it was like a smoother rock, but it was um, more of those kinds of rocks you'd find in like a riverbed or like the bottom of the ocean. They're like heated rocks and basically it, it's what the Indians used to do. They used to get bigger, uh, stronger rocks. They hit them together and it'd chip off stuff and they'd make knives and, and uh, arrowheads and all this other good stuff, right? And so they made knives and they started cutting cactuses to make, and they opened up the cactuses so that way they could, they could uh, turn basically the cactus um, leaf or the cactus plant, like the, the actual cactus part, a, a canteen so they could hold water and all the other good stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, where do these guys just learn this stuff? Is it something they're taught or, by somebody or? You know, it it's it's really surprising. But I just thought I would want I would share that with you for this quick little video and I hope you do enjoy it. So please con like, comment, subscribe and all the good stuff and I will see you guys in the next one.